Whether your site is a dynamic site like a WordPress site or a single page site with lots of images and videos on it, the time that it takes for your website to load in your visitor's browser is very important for at least a couple of reasons. One, if it takes longer than just a few seconds for your site to load, then you take the risk of your visitor quickly moving on to the next shiny object or cat video instead of becoming your next customer or lead. Another and somewhat related reason for a fast loading website is that Google prefers fast instead of slow. Matt Cutts, who is a software engineer at Google, says that page load time is one of the factoring elements of search rankings. Now that was back in 2010 and just lately Google has or will very soon will add the same site speed penalties to mobile websites. So in addition to keeping your visitor happy with a fast loading page you will also keep Google happy and they will in turn reward you with better rankings for your search engine results which will hopefully reward you with more visitors that you will then hopefully convert to customers or leads. So whether or not you're a fan of Google and all the slaps and pandas and other animals that Google throws at us webmasters it is in your business's best interest to strive to have your website load as fast as it possibly can and to keep it that way. So when it comes to your website, speed is a good thing. Thanks for watching and you have a great day. From time to time, you should test your website load speed using an online tool of your preference and there's no shortage of speed testing tools for you to choose from either. If you do a quick Google search, you'll see that there are currently over 81 million results for website speed test, so there's no excuse for you not to do it. In this video, we're going to look at a few tools, which are free, as is most of the tools you're going to find online. And one of these tools is called PageSpeed Insights from Google. Here, let's have a look. Come on over to developers.google.com forward slash speed forward slash page speed. That'll bring you to the page here that you can have a look at not just the insights, but also the other page speed tools. If we scroll down a bit, you can see down here, you can check into the page speed module, the page speed optimization library, and so on. But we want to run the insights test. So go ahead and click on that. That'll bring you to this page. Very simple. Put in the web page URL that you want to test. Click on analyze. and It'll break things down for you from a mobile device standpoint as well as a desktop standpoint. And it will display what it sees to be the good and the bad points of your web page. And will give you insights as to how to fix the bad. Another such tool is called GT Metrics. Now this combines a couple of tools, one being PageSpeed Insights and the other being YSlow, which is from the Yahoo developers. And like with PageSpeed, you just put in the web page URL here and click on Analyze and it'll go to town and do the test for both PageSpeed and YSlow. Let me demonstrate. I'll go ahead and grab the URL to my website here, copy that into my clipboard, come back here and paste. Click on Analyze, and that's what it's doing right now. It's analyzing it. Now, these tests may have varying results because they may be testing from servers in different parts of the world. For example, this one is from Vancouver, Canada, and this gives you the score from PageSpeed and from YSlow. And then it breaks down here for PageSpeed, YSlow. But if you click on the links here for that particular item, and it'll open up the items that could be improved and some links here to give you ideas as to what the heck they're talking about. And you'll get a similar layout if you do the test on PageSpeed Insights. Now another one is called Pingdom. Now Pingdom is a little bit more than just a load speed tester. And as you can see here, it's not free. It starts at about 14 bucks a month. But here's the free part. If we scroll down to the very bottom of the page, and over here on the left, if you click on Tools, these are the free testing that you can get from Pingdom. And what we're mostly interested in is the full page test. And like the other testers, just put in the URL here, click on Test Now. And similar to the Waterfall option under GT Metrics, it gives you a color-coded analysis of each section of your site. And over here on the right, you can click on the arrow to give you more information about that particular test. Go and close that up. Now if we come on up to the top here, you can see that it gives you a bit of a summary of all the test results. 
And if we scroll down to the very bottom of the page, this will give you a breakdown of some of the different elements of the test, the color, what the different colors mean, and so on. But of these, I prefer GT Metrics, one, because it kind of combines two different services in one, that being Google's PageSpeed and Yahoo's YSlow. And it does give you the ability to learn more about how to improve some of the lower scores on your test. And that's going to bring us to the end of this video on website speed test tools. Thanks for watching and you have a great day. You should test the load times of your websites pretty often, especially if you are regularly adding content, plugins, scripts, or testing new themes. Another major reason for having a quick loading site besides keeping your visitors on your site is getting visitors to your site in the first place by way of free search engine traffic. For example, Google considers your site's load speed whenever it decides where in the search results to put your site. Many tools you can use to run these load speed tests are free. One such tool is called YSlow. YSlow is from the development department of Yahoo. And in this video, I'm going to give you a tour of YSlow and cover some of the major components that will help you get the most out of your site speed testing with this free tool and what to avoid whenever using YSlow. Now, YSlow has developed 23 different testable rules related to the optimum load speed of a web page. And whenever you run the test on your web page, which we're going to do here in just a second, it compares what you have to the optimum way things should be and gives you a score based on the results of that test. Now, before we run that test, I do want to point out that each one of these is a clickable link that will take you to a page that will explain more about each one of these testable rules. And I want to show you some things to consider when installing YSlow on your particular browser. As you can see here, it is available for many of the major browsers, but there's a biggie missing, and that is Internet Explorer. It does not work with Internet Explorer. And do not use these links to install YSlow on your particular browser because they may not work. For example, with Firefox, it tells you that you need to first install Firebug and then install YSlow as an add-on to Firebug. Now, Firebug is a great plugin. It works perfectly for developers, but YSlow does not work. And if we click on the Firebug link up here, it opens up and one of the tabs to Firebug is YSlow. And I can just click on any one of these links in here. And by the way, I'm clicking and click on the run test button, nothing is working. This I think is a result of some of the updates to Firefox that YSlow has not kept up with. So how you install YSlow on Firefox, or for that matter on any of those browsers, let's go ahead and close out of this, come on back here, is do not click on these links for installation. Instead, click on the link up here in the top right corner because YSlow recognizes magically what browser you're in. For example, right now I'm in the Firefox browser and I'm in the Chrome browser here and it recognizes that I'm in the Chrome browser. And if we click on this button up here in the top right corner, install YSlow, it gives me this pop out. Now I've already got YSlow installed. That's why this button here is not clickable. But if we come on back to my Firefox browser, click on this, it brings us to the page on mobile installation instructions. You got option one and option two. But the one that we want is the one at the bottom here to add this to our bookmarks toolbar. And you do that by just left click, hold and drag that blue button up to your bookmarks bar, which by the way, you need to have your bookmarks bar showing. And you come on up here to view, toolbars, and make sure your bookmarks toolbar is checked. Otherwise you won't see it up there. And now YSlow is working. Now it's a little more limited in Firefox than it is in Chrome and I'll demonstrate that right now. Let's go ahead and run a quick test here. Click on the bookmarklet, this pops up. Click on run tests. And by the way, you can see you got these different tabs here. And as soon as you click on one of these tabs, it's gonna start running the test. That's why I haven't clicked on those yet to show those to you. But you have here various rule sets by default. You've got three rule sets and the V2 test for all 23 of those rule sets we talked about a second ago. The classic V1 only tests for I believe 13 of those 23 and the small site or blog tests for 15 of those 23. So if you do not want to know about all 23 possible pluses or minuses to the speed of your site, then choose V1 or this one or you can click on edit and create your own custom set. 
Now this is one of the other items that does not work as good as the Chrome browser does with YSlow because you can click on new set, create whatever test items you want to have on your new set, click on save rule set as, give it a name, click on save, click on save, click on new set, and we're good to go. But as soon as we get out of this, by the way, you can see it showing up right here. You can go ahead and run the test right now, but as soon as we click on close and then go to open it up again, it's gone. It doesn't actually save it. That's another problem or a bug with the Firefox version of YSlow versus the Chrome version of YSlow. Let's come on back here and do this test. And again, this is Firefox. And for the V2, for all 23 rule sets, I've got an overall performance score of 77. And it tells me what I excel at, what I fail at, and those in between. And if you click on these, it will give you an explanation over here to the right of what needs to be fixed and how to go about fixing it. Now, if we do the same thing, go ahead and close this out. Oh, and by the way, you've got a help section over here that if you click on that, you got your Why Slow Help, FAQs, the blog, and a forum, and some issues that you might want to be aware of, or maybe you want to report an issue that you just found out about on this particular instance of Why Slow. But let's do the same thing over on Chrome. And I've already got it installed on Chrome, so let's come to the website, the exact same website. Click on Why Slow, get this little blowout here instead of the iframe set up like with Firefox, but at least this one works completely. Now then you get the same tabs up here. Click on Run Test. And again, I'm in V2 for this test as well. And the other one was 77 on Firefox. Here I get a 78. So there's a little bit of a difference here. And just like with Firefox, you can click on these links here. and It'll give you a rundown here of what is wrong, what can be done to improve that score, and so on. Now the Chrome version does allow you to save these rule sets and display it for future reference. So if we click on edit, come over to new set and make your own new set. And you might decide to do a custom set if you have a website that is heavy in CSS or heavy in images or some other item that you want to test for and you're not overly concerned with some of these other rule sets. So you make your custom set. Choose the items you want to test for on that particular site. Click on save rule set as. I would give it that site name. Click on save, click on save, click on new set, and we're solid. Now then if you come on up here and click on the drop down, you can see that it's right there. Go ahead and run a test. And based on the items that I checked, this is the overall score. Now then if we close this out and then open this up again, get this big old blow out here. Now then you can see that that rule set is still intact. It's still part of our default settings. Whereas the same thing on Firefox, it automatically wipes out that custom set that you created as soon as you close it out. Well, that's going to bring us to the end of this video on the YSlow Site Speed Testing Tool. Thanks for watching and you have a great day. There are many online tools that can test the load time of your web pages. This video will show you one of these tools and how to put it to use. This tool is called Google PageSpeed Insights. Now, Google's PageSpeed actually has a few different tools to help you optimize your site for both mobile devices as well as desktop computers. But this video is going to stick with PageSpeed Insights. And basically, what it does is analyze the load speed of your web page and report to you the results along with the suggestions on how to optimize those results. Let's take a quick look here. Now, we are at Google Developers PageSpeed Tools page, and you can get here by going to developers.google.com slash speed slash PageSpeed, and don't forget about the HTTPS at the very beginning. And on this page, if we scroll down, you can see the additional tools that are offered by Google's PageSpeed, but we're going to concentrate on the insights. Now, if you want to learn more about the inner workings of insights and what they actually test for, Go to Read Docs, click on Reference, and Rules over here in the left sidebar. And each one of these is a clickable link to tell you more about that particular rule that Insights tests for. But let's go on back here to Insights and give it a quick run. Click on Run Insights. Let's put the URL of our website in here. And this is our website here. And by the way, 
Let's go ahead and log into the dashboard area here just to show you that this is what I consider to be representative of a small niche WordPress site. There's 305 posts, 10 pages, 289 comments, and it's running on the default WordPress 2012 theme. Actually, this is the child theme of the 2012 theme because I've got some customizations in here like the curvature of the content area and the increased size of the font and so on. Along with that, we also have some AdSense ads in the top and on the sidebar along with some additional ads as well. So let's go ahead and grab our URL here. Come on back to Insights, paste that in here for our test. Click on Analyze. And for a mobile device, it gives us 66 out of 100. Desktop, 78 out of 100. Both are not fantastic, but they're not too terribly bad. I mean, yeah, they could be a little worse anyway. But one of the big things that can be fixed, especially for the desktop, is enabling compression. And that will greatly improve our score here. That also affects the load speed of the mobile device. It's one of the two items here in the red exclamation mark. So let's go ahead and tackle that real quick by coming over to our cPanel control panel, scrolling on down until we get to the software and services module, and click on optimize website. And by default, disabled is selected. We want to select the second radio button. It says compress all content. Click on update settings. Come on back and rerun our test. And we've greatly improved the score of both mobile devices and the desktop. And that item related to compressing our files is no longer there because, well, we fixed it. Now, one other thing I wanted to point out before I close out this video on PageSpeed Insights is that this tests for the, an individual page. In this case, it's the home page of our WordPress site. Google PageSpeed Insights also has a plugin that will test every single page on your site. Now let's go ahead and take a look at that. Go to our plugins, add new, and up here in the search plugins box, type in Google PageSpeed, and this is the one we're looking for here. Google PageSpeed Insights for WordPress. Go ahead and click on install now and activate. As it says here, you can get to the settings by going to tools or just click that link there. But if you come over here to the left and hover over tools, click on PageSpeed Insights. And we're actually going to need to apply for an API key here. And you've got plenty of documentation over here on how to go about getting that API key and how to put this to use. But what this plugin does is it actually tests every single page on your site and gives you a score similar to what we see here for each one of those pages. And that way you can drill down and see which pages require a little more improvement and which ones you can simply just leave alone. And that's going to bring us to the end of this video on an introduction to Google PageSpeed Insights and how to put it to use. Thanks for watching and you have a great day. A huge non-optimized image can really slow your web page load time. This video is going to cover some tips, tricks, and techniques in optimizing the images on your WordPress site. Now, ideally, you should optimize your images before uploading them to your WordPress site, but if you have an existing site with a whole bunch of images already, it's not too late to optimize those as well. Now, there's a couple of things to consider when talking about optimizing images. One is the file size. Another is the file dimensions. Now, if you've got a WordPress site that has a maximum content area of, say, 1,000 pixels in width, then there's really no reason to be uploading an image that is 3,000 pixels wide. All you're doing is asking your browser and all of your visitors' browsers to work extra hard in loading that image and squishing it down to fit the dimensions that WordPress will allow. So right off the bat, if you've got a whole bunch of images on your site that are really huge, a lot larger than what the size allows for on your site, then I would go to an FTP client like FileZilla or whatever you might use download all of your images, run them through an image editor, changing those image dimensions to those that would fit better on your WordPress site. Now, the other item to consider is the file size of your image. And that also can be reduced without reducing the quality of the image through some of these image editing programs. Now, if you do a Google search at the time of this recording anyway, a search for image optimizer, you're going to come up with a little over 2 million results. So there's really no excuse whatsoever in not optimizing your images. Now, these results, I'm sure, contain both programs that are downloaded and installed on your computer, as well as web-based programs that you don't have to download. And I'm sure a whole bunch of these are free. For example, for PC users like myself, 
You've got Earth and View, where you can go to earthandview.com, download both the program and the plugins, or if you're a Mac user, head on over to imageoptim.com. I'm not a Mac user, so I'm going on secondhand knowledge here, but from what I understand, this is a great program. Both are no cost. Or if you want to stick with the web-based program, go to dynamicdrive.com and click on the image optimizer link. And you can either enter the URL of an image or you can click on choose file and go to the image on your computer that you want to reduce in file size. Now you've got an upload file size limit of 2.86 megabytes and you just select what you want to convert that image to. You can either leave it at the same as input type or you can change whatever it is to a GIF, JPEG, or PNG. Now this one here is a little under the max of 2.86. I think this is 2.66 megabytes. And then I'm going to show you all the results and then just click on optimize. Now, and once this goes through and does its thing, it's going to give you a whole list of the images. And then you will scroll down, pick the best one that looks good, but also has the best reduction in file size without sacrificing the quality of the image. And then right click on the image you want to use. This one, for example, has been reduced from 2.66 megabytes down to 808 kilobytes. Just right click on the image, left click on save image as. Now this is the Chrome browser. If you're in a different browser, then this is going to look a little different. Navigate to where you want to save that image to. Change the name, otherwise you'll overwrite the existing image. And it's that easy. Now that's for off-site reduction. Let's say you've got a bunch of images on your site already. And if you come on over here to my media library, you can see that I've got a few of them on here. They're not giving you the dimension size, but these are fairly large. To take care of these, you've got a couple of plugins you can work with. One is called WP Smush, which kind of took the place of an older one from Yahoo called WP Smush.it. This one works great, but you do have a couple of limitations here. Another one with a few less limitations is called Msanity. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate the one from WPMU Dev. So we'll come on back to our WordPress site, go to Plugins, go to Add New, and in the Search Plugins box here, type in WP space Smush, hit Enter, click on Install Now, and then Activate. And they do have a pro version with a lot more bells and whistles to it, but for what I'm going to be demonstrating, we don't need the pro version. But definitely check that out. Now the smushing will take place in the Media Library section. Come on back up here. And if we go to the library section first, you can see here that this column has been added where you can smush individual images. And by the way, whenever you go to upload images now, WP Smush will automatically smush those files for you as it's being uploaded. But this is in case you want to smush these images that are already on your site. Let's go on over to Smush. And it looks like we are reducing them now. Four out of 10 total attachments have been smushed. And we can go ahead and just finish up the bulk smushing. Now then if we come on back to our library, you can see here where it gives you the amount that it was reduced by, and every little bit helps. So now browsers all over the world are breathing a sigh of relief anytime that they come to your site. And that's going to bring us to the end of this video on optimizing your images for a faster loading WordPress page. Thanks for watching and you have a great day. This video is going to detail some easy to follow ways to increase the speed that it takes for your homepage to load in your and your visitors' browsers. Now, if your blog posts contain images, and a lot of them do, then the first thing you want to consider is optimizing those images that are currently on your site. Ideally, you want to optimize these images before you upload them to your site, but we still need to take care of those that are already on your site. Now, when I say optimize images, I mean reduce the file size and reduce the dimensions. Now, those two items can be done with the help of a couple of different plugins. One being WP Smush will reduce the file size, and another one, Resize Image After Upload, will reduce the file dimensions. So, if, for example, you're uploading images from a smartphone or a digital camera, then that file size is going to be huge maybe as much as three or four megabytes. The file dimensions are also going to be huge. That could be three or four thousand pixels wide. Well, that's going to be viewed in a possibly 600 pixel wide content area. 
So you're asking your browser to do a whole lot of extra work that it shouldn't have to. Again, optimize those images before you upload them, but for those that are being auto-uploaded from digital cameras or from smartphones or those that are already on your site, these are two plugins you should check into. Now, one thing I need to say though, as far as this plugin is concerned, resize image after upload, be sure and read some of the stuff about this first to make sure that your WordPress site can do this. For example, you'll have to have some adjustments made, more than likely, to your php.ini file that's on your server. So if you're not sure about any of this stuff, read it over, contact your web hosting service, and let them know what you're trying to do, and they should be able to tackle that stuff for you. So now that we've got our images optimized, the next thing that we want to take care of is the number of posts that are actually being displayed on your homepage. By default, there's 10. Now then, if each one of your posts have a lot of images, a lot of videos, a lot of text, then you can tell by this scrolly bar over here that there's a whole lot going on here. All this stuff has to be loaded into the browser first. So let's go ahead and minimize that by cutting that default number of of posts that are being displayed from 10 down to maybe three or four. We do that by going into our dashboard area, coming over to settings and clicking on reading and blog pages show at most 10 posts. We'll change that to three and keep an eye on that scrolly bar over here on the right. Come on down here, click on save changes. Come on back to our home page. See how small that is. Let's refresh. And it wasn't a huge increase, but it definitely helped out. Now then, we've gone from 10 posts to 3 posts. Now each one of these posts, sorry I didn't want to make you dizzy there, but each one of these posts have a lot of content, have a lot of images, a lot of text, maybe some videos. Let's cut that down, again just on the home page, to just a few paragraphs and maybe an image, or just a few paragraphs and maybe a video. And we want to use what's called the More tag to cut this off at a part in the post where it will be enticing to the reader to check out the rest of the post. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's go ahead and check out the post for that working squirrel. And this is kind of like the idea behind TV series that end at what's called a cliffhanger. Something that will entice you to come back next week to see what happened to the person at the end of last week's episode. So let's say that in in amongst this gibberish that right here is a good place for that cliffhanger, if you will. Put the cursor right there, come on up here into the formatting tools and click on insert read more tag. Right there it is. Come on back up here and click on update. Now imagine that we've done this to all of our posts. Come on back to our home page and refresh and don't forget, check out our scrolly bar over there. Major increase. Now if we did that to all of our posts, then we're only going to have this much showing of each post. And on the home page, we have what's called the continue reading tag. Just click on that to continue reading the rest of that particular post on the post page, not on the home page. So just a quick recap. We've optimized all of our images. We've reduced the number of posts that actually show up on the home page from 10 to a much smaller number. And we've reduced the amount of content on each one of those posts that are on the home page from the entire post to just a little bit of that post by using the more tag. And lastly, you might consider the overall design of your site or theme. I mean, if you've got a whole lot of stuff going on in the sidebars and pop-ups and fly-outs and other gizmos that you're trying to use to try to gather leads or opt-ins or sell affiliate products or AdSense ads, well, you might take a long, hard look at scaling those things back, at least on the homepage. Well, that's going to bring us to the end of this video on optimizing your WordPress homepage. Thanks for watching, and you have a great day. Your WordPress site is written in a code language called PHP and uses a database to keep everything organized like your usernames, posts, your post revisions, and a whole lot of other stuff you really don't think about whenever you sit down to write a post. Now, Just like when you drive your car on a regular basis, every now and then you need to get a tune-up on your car so that it continues to run at its best and get the best gas mileage. Well, your WordPress site also needs a tune-up on the database every now and then to keep your site running at its best and loading in your visitor's browser as fast as possible. This video is going to show you how to do a basic tune-up or optimize your WordPress database. Now before we do anything else, make sure that you have a fresh backup of both your files and your database. There are several ways in which we can optimize our database. I'm just going to tackle one and what I consider to be the easiest way. 
and that is to log into our cPanel control panel. Scroll on down until you get to the databases module. Click on PHP My Admin. Then over here in the left column, if you've got several databases, make sure that you're optimizing the correct one. Actually, I would suggest doing this to all of your databases, but for the sake of this video, this is the one I'm looking at here. That's the database for our site here. And over here on the far right corner, let me see if I can squeeze this out a little bit, is the column for overhead. And there should be, like these, nothing in here. Because these numbers here represent things that have taken place in these two tables that have left behind remnants or trash, if you will, or overhead. So a quick way to get rid of this stuff or optimize these tables is to come over here next to where it says check all and just click on this link here, check tables having overhead. Can't get any easier than that. It automatically checks all the tables in your database that have overhead. And then in this drop down box to the right of that, click on that. And just out of the scope of this video, was a link that said optimize table. Now you can either use that or repair table. The results of either one of those would be the same thing, the removal of that overhead. So now if we come on back to our database and scroll down, you can see that the overhead has been successfully removed and our database is, is chugging along on all cylinders nice and smooth. Then just close out our PHP My Admin. Come on back here just to make sure that our site still works. Refresh and we're in business. Now that's the quick and easy way. Just in case you're wondering, there are plugins that you can install onto your WordPress site that will do a lot of this manual stuff for you automatically. One such plugin is called WP-DB Manager, and you just go to Add New under Plugins, do a search for WP-DB Manager. This is gonna pop up, click on Install Now, then click on Activate, and then just follow the process of setting this up. But whether you're doing this through the help of a plugin or the manual way, if you will, that I just showed you, in either case, before you do anything, make sure that you have a full backup of both your files and your database. That's going to bring us to the end of this video on quickly and easily optimizing your WordPress database. Thanks for watching, and you have a great day. When it comes to speeding up the load time of your WordPress site, one of the ways you can do this is by using what's called gzip. Now what this does is it squeezes all of the files of your site down to a much smaller size and sends that zipped up file to your visitor's browser and then your visitor's browser then uncompresses it, shakes it out, fluffs it up and displays your site to your visitor. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how all this stuff works by doing a test to see if my site is properly compressed. Spoiler alert, it's not. And if it isn't, then I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to get it compressed or gzipped. Now, first off, let's go ahead and make sure my site is working properly because we are going to be dealing with some code. And as such, I want to first off say that you need to do a full backup. You know, let's err on the side of safety. Do a full backup of both your files and your database, just to be on the safe side. And then come on over to www.giftofspeed.com slash gzip dash test. That'll bring you to this page here. And all we have to do is put in the URL of our website here. And let's come on back here, copy, paste kind of thing. Copy, paste, click on check. Ta-da! As I had mentioned, it is not enabled. My site is not enabled for gzip. And it tells you here the benefits if it were enabled and if we scroll on down here, how do I enable gzip? Click here for detailed guide. Well, this gives you a detailed guide of a couple of different ways, actually a few different ways in which you can enable gzip on your site. Most of these ways require you to edit your .ht access file, and I'll show you that here in just a second. Another way down here at the bottom, which specifically talks about WordPress, and as it says here in the red print, it's not recommended whatsoever. So we have these options here, and if you're not really familiar with what type of server you have, chances are pretty good it's on an Apache server. And if you're interested in making any of these adjustments and you're just not sure about getting your hands dirty, making these changes to your .htaccess file, then I would suggest contacting your hosting service 
and letting them know what you're wanting to do. There's actually a couple of different types of gzip that you may want to find out first which one your particular server provides. Again, that would require a contact to your hosting service. Now, that all being said, let me show you the easy way. Log into your cPanel control panel. I know I should have let off with this, but scroll on down until you get to the software and services module. And right here where it says optimize website, Go ahead and click on that. Now, most cPanel control panels will have this option. If yours does not, or you do not have a cPanel style control panel, then contact your hosting service and tell them what you're wanting to do and ask them about which particular gzip code you would be able to add to your .ht access file. Anywho, we are in our cPanel control panel, clicked on optimize website, click on that radio button that says compress all content. Now, don't blink because we're done. Let's come on back to our test and let's see about our compression. It's enabled all by simply going to our cPanel control panel and then going down and clicking on optimize website. That's how easy it is to enable gzip and serve up a much faster loading website to your visitors than if gzip was not enabled. And that's going to finish off this video on using gzip to make your WordPress site load much faster in your visitor's browser. Thanks for watching and you have a great day. This video will show you how to improve the performance of your website by adding expires headers to your .ht access file. So what the heck is expires headers? Well, when set up properly, expires headers tells your visitor's browser whether an item like an image or a CSS file can be stored in the visitor's browser for future access or, or if the browser has to get that item directly from the server or the source. Now, just to clarify, when I say it's stored in the visitor's browser, the browser actually downloads those items to the visitor's computer, also referred to as locally. Now, for example, whenever you set an expires header for one of these items like the JPG or a PNG image file, then when the visitor returns to the site or visits a different page on that site, those image file types, along with all the other items that we have set the expires headers for, will load much faster because they are already stored in the visitor's browser and the browser does not have to go all the way back to the server to get those items because they're pulled up from the visitor's own computer. Now, for this to work, you need to be on an Apache server, which most are these days. Also, if after adding your expires headers code snippet, the tests are not showing the expires headers feature being active, then contact your host and ask if they have the expires headers module activated and while you got them on the line, ask them which code snippet do they suggest you use because there's quite a few different code snippets. And I'm going to include a lot of them in a copy and paste format along with this video. Also, it's worth mentioning that sometimes a membership or an e-commerce plugin might not play nice with certain settings within the browser caching or expires headers settings. And if this happens, then just contact the plugin's creator and ask them how to get their plugin to work alongside with the browser caching. Now, first off, I want to go ahead and run a test to see where we are in regards to the browser caching, also known as expires headers. Now, this is the site we're going to be doing the testing on. So we just come on up here and refresh just to show that it is working. Now, we're going to be doing the test on GT Metrics, and we can get there by going to gtmetrics.com, and we just enter the URL here and then click on Analyze. Now, this particular site is going to be doing a test for two different tools, that being Google's PageSpeed Insights and Yahoo's YSlow. You can see they're doing it over here. And these are the two different scores. Now, these two services test for different items. And that's why you've got varying scores for the exact same site. So we scroll down here and see for PageSpeed Insights, leverage browser caching, I've got a mediocre score of 74. That's a C. And if we click on this, it gets a little drop down and it tells us a little bit more about it. And if we hover over the what's this mean button, you get this pop up here and you can click on the read more to tell you more about PageSpeed Insights view of leverage browser caching. They give you some suggestions and some code snippets to be using. But right here's what I want to point out. For these items that are on my site, these other ones are external links, so I don't have any control over those. But the items that are actually on my site tell you that the expiration is not specified. That's what we're going to be fixing. Now if we go to YSlow, 
You can see here we got a big fat goose egg, zero, hit total F. Click on the link here, and again, this is for expires headers. I guess that's YSLO's version of browser caching, tomato, tomato kind of thing. But you can see here that there's a whole lot of different items in here that are external links that I have no control over, but there are a few of them in here that are on my website, that are on my URL, that I may have some control over. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to hover over the What's This button, come on down here and click on Read More, and this tells you a little bit more about why slow and how they interpret expires headers. So what I want to do, I suggest reading this stuff over for additional information, but what I'm going to do is scroll on down here to the bottom and just copy this code into my clipboard. And, this, and they tell you all about how to set things up here. But I'm going to log into my cPanel control panel, go to File Manager, and open up my .ht access file. Right click, left click on Code Edit. And then at the very top of the page, so I'm going to paste that code. And you can see here the different file types and the time over here on the right. Now this time is not set in stone. This is just what YSLO suggests. And like I said, there's a whole bunch of additional code snippets you might want to use. And I'm going to include those along with this video for you to kind of check out. But you can always adjust these times, but you don't want to go more than one year. That's kind of the maximum you want to mess with. Let's go ahead and save this and come on back to... G metrics and let's run that test again and we're done and under page speed it upped our score from a 74 C to a B 87 but whenever you go to Y slow it's still giving us a goose egg for some reason I've noticed that Y slow does not recognize expires headers as far as that code being entered and it was even the code that I pulled off of their page but if we open this up and if we look at the items in here, none of those items that used to be on our URL are being shown anymore. All these items are from external links now. So that's just some kind of a glitch in amongst the Y slow testing for some reason. So it is working, obviously. So if you just stick with the code that we went with from Y slow, but if we just use this code here, it will greatly improve the speed in which your site loads in your visitor's browser. And that's going to bring us to the end of this video on how to add expires headers to leverage browser caching. Thanks for watching and you have a great day. This video is going to walk you through the basic setup of the W3 Total Cache plugin. Now I say basic setup because there is a bunch of various settings that you can tweak in order to get an even faster and more efficient loading WordPress site. But even with just the basics we're going to be covering, there's a huge boost of speed for your site's load time. Now, the magic of what this plugin does is caching. That's probably why it's part of the name. The process of caching is basically when certain bits of your WordPress site does not change very often, like, say, your header image or your CSS files. Well, these bits are stored for quicker retrieval. Stored? Stored where, you might be wondering. Well, there are two types of caching going on here. Browser caching, which is local, and page caching, which is server-side. Now, the browser caching is when the browser of the site visitor stores or downloads some of these bits to the site visitor's computer. These bits are also called temporary internet files. So when the site visitor returns to the site, those stored bits are more quickly pulled from the site visitor's computer than if they had to be pulled all the way from the web server the site is on. So the benefit of the browser caching is only seen after the first visit to the site. The other type of caching is page caching. And it is better understood if you know that when a visitor goes to your website, there's a whole lot of moving parts. For example, WordPress has to talk to all the PHP scripts and they have to then talk to the MySQL database and then all of the requested pages files are put in order and shot out to the visitor's browser. So what page caching does is kind of takes a snapshot of the completed page and stores it on the website server so when someone wants to see that page instead of burning through all of those server resources and the time that it takes to talk back and forth the server simply delivers that snapshot to the visitor's browser. Boom! way quicker delivery of the page and saving a ton of server resources in the process. So browser caching is storing the bits and pieces of the site on the visitor's computer and page caching is storing a snapshot of sorts on the website server. So let's do a quick test to see where we are before we install and configure 
W3 total cash on our site. Now this is the site we're going to be tweaking here and I'm just going to copy the URL. Let's go ahead and refresh it just to make sure that it is working. Okay, good deal. And let's come on over to gtmetrics.com to do our test. Click on analyze. And you can see here that we've got the scores for two different services, one from Google's PageSpeed Insights and one from Yahoo's Y Slow. And they test for different items and that's why the scores are so different. But you can scroll down a bit and get some more information on each individual item that PageSpeed tests for and that Y Slow tests for. But right here are the main details that we're looking for right now and that's the page load time, total page size, and the number of requests. And we're going to go ahead and install, activate, and configure W3 Total Cache. Then we'll come back in here and run a comparison test. So we'll see these numbers side by side. And hopefully they will be much improved on the after than they were on the before. So with that said, let's go ahead and come on over to our dashboard area. Now before we actually jump into this any further, I do want to mention that you should go ahead and do a full backup of both files and database. Now W3 Total Cache is a powerful plugin that can massively speed up your site if your web server is properly set up. So if your website, say for example, is hosted on a free shared hosting service, yeah they do exist, then you are likely to run into some problems using W3 Total Cache. That said, it's a great idea to have a kind of a backup plan in place in case one or more of the items that we're going to be configuring on W3 Total Cache messes up your site. But of course you're going to have the full backup of your files and database so you can just put everything back as it was before W3 Total Cache but before reinstalling your backup I will suggest that you first contact your hosting service if something goes wrong and let them know what you're doing and what has happened and get them to help you fix the problem. Because whether they cannot or will not help you out, you will at the very least have that backup that you can use to reinstall everything as it was prior to W3 Total Cache. Okay, with our multi-layered safety net in place, let's go ahead and install, activate, and configure W3 Total Cache. Come on over to Plugins, click on Add New, and the installation and activation part is the same as it is with any other plugin. Up here in the search plugins, type in W3 Total Cache, hit enter, and then the one that says W3 Total Cache, go ahead and click on install now and activate. Now you've got this that shows up up top, but we don't want to worry about the edge mode at all, so we can go ahead and just click on hide this message. But you can see here on the left that we do have a new link called performance, and whenever you hover over it, you get this pop out. Now, there's only a few of these items we're going to be messing with in this video, and that is general settings, where we're going to be able to turn on page cache and browser cache, because everything else we're going to leave alone. If you want to learn more about Minify or database cache or CDN, be sure to check out the FAQ, and that's going to give you a ton of information. So let's head on over to general settings, and by all means, do not mess with toggle all caching types on or off. Just leave that alone. Now under preview mode, you can enable this if you, say for example, have a well-seasoned site that's got a lot of posts and you want to be able to preview your settings before actually seeing how it affects a live site, then go ahead and click on enable. And then you'll have this show up where you can preview any changes that take place without actually deploying it. And then when you're ready to deploy and you want to disable and deploy. Pretty simple stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and click on disable now and get back to where we were. Now that the only thing we're gonna be messing with on this page is page cache. We wanna check that to enable. We want to leave this as disk enhanced. You get the drop down there, you can see the other options, but we want disk enhanced. And we're gonna skip everything else except for browser cache. We wanna make sure that that's checked to enable that. Everything else we're gonna leave alone. And then just click on any of these save all settings buttons and we're good. Now that's under general settings. Now then we're going to take care of some individual items in the page cache and the browser cache sections, starting with page cache. Click on that. And rather than having this to be an hour long video, while I go through and explain each and every one of these items, instead I'm just gonna tell you what to check. Cache front page, check. Cache feeds, check. If you have an SSL certificate attached to your domain, check that. I don't, so I'm not going to worry about it. The other ones leave alone. 
don't cache pages for login users check that and check this one for don't cache pages for these user roles as well as all the roles you do not want to serve up the old cache content to they will instead get the fresh new content and this holds true for any membership roles that might be out to the side here if yours is a membership site so check all of those click on save all settings and that's under the general section if we scroll down the next one cache preload go ahead and check that leave the default numbers there and if you have a sitemap url which you should have a sitemap go ahead and enter that in here save all settings and if we come on down to purge policy the default settings are just fine advanced you want to make sure that compatibility mode is checked everything else you can just leave alone click on save all settings and that's it for page cache now then browser cache under general settings I'm going to untick set last modified header and instead I'm going to tick set entity tag or e tag and I'm going to select set expires headers instead of cache control header and you do not want to check the box next to set w3 total cache header and you want to leave the enable HTTP or the G zip compression checked check the box next to don't set cookies for static files and then click on save all settings and that's the settings for the general section and as we made these adjustments here under the general section they also affected these boxes under the subsections for CSS and JavaScript HTML and XML media and other files and all of these default settings are just fine but they are there just in case you find the need to come in and uncheck the expires headers for the CSS and JavaScript or just the time for the expires header lifetime from one year down to something else but one year would be a maximum you have that ability to make these granular adjustments and any adjustments you do make be sure to click on save all settings and that's it we enabled page cache and browser cache in the general settings we selected disk enhanced under page cache and we adjusted a few items under page cache and browser cache and that was it any questions that you have about any of this stuff or you want to learn more about these other items we did not mess with be sure to check out the FAQ now it's time to retest Let's head on back over to GT Metrics. Click on Compare. And here we can see the change that took effect as a result of our tweaking of just the page cache and the browser cache. Total page size was reduced, page load time was reduced, and both scores were increased. And you can scroll down to see the improvements on the individual items for both page speed and Y slow. And that's going to bring us to the end of this video on installing and activating W3 Total Cache to increase the speed of your load time of your website. Thanks for watching, and you have a great day. The W3 Total Cache plugin is a powerful tool to help boost the load time speed of your WordPress site. But if you decide to uninstall the plugin, you might find it a bit tricky to get it completely removed. Well, this video will walk you through the steps of totally uninstalling the W3 Total Cache plugin. Now, we will be editing some files within your WordPress installation directory, so we're going to need access to either your cPanel control panel, which is what I'm going to be using, or you can do it through an FTP client, but there's a little bit more work involved there because you got to download the files, edit the files, re-upload the files, overwrite the existing files on your server, and so using the file manager within your cPanel control panel is a lot easier. Let's go ahead and come on into our dashboard area and go to our installed plugins. And you can see here that we've got the W3 Total Cache installed and activated. So if you go ahead and deactivate it, go through the normal process of deactivating and deleting an installed plugin just like anything else now then if you go into our cPanel control panel and come on down to file manager in older versions of w3 total cache you'd have to go in and clean out your .ht access file and delete some code within your wp-config.php file well in the current version of w3 total cache that's all been taken care of for you upon deactivating and deleting that plugin from your plugin dashboard. But if we come into the wp-content directory, there are a couple of items that are hanging around here left over from the deletion of that w3 total cache plugin. That would be this directory and the cache directory. So let's go ahead and select both of those. 
And to do that, I just held down the control key as I was selecting the other directory and then click on delete. And just open up the plugins directory just to make sure that W3 total cache is all gone. And it is. And that's it. We have successfully totally removed all remnants of the W3 total cache plugin. And that's going to bring us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching and you have a great day.